Hello everyone and welcome to yet another Azusian session again. So today I want you to uh, get back to one of the old project of mine, uh, which is called Dead. Right, so I'm going to put the link uh, to, to the project in the description. So the source code, uh, this one. And it stands for Dramatic Editor. So uh, let me quickly show uh, the project and you'll understand why it is called like that. So let's go to Zozin dead and let's rebuild everything, right? So, and let's wait a little bit and let's start this entire thing. And this is what we're greeted with, right? So uh, you can clearly see that there is a cursor. You can type something in there and let's start typing C code. Uh, so as you can see, there is a little bit of uh, camera action going on, uh, right? And it's actually super fun to type things uh, with this text editor and stuff like that, right? It, obviously, it's unfinished. I kind of kind of like abandoned it a little bit after some time, right? So, but it's super fun. So it, I think it started just basically like a meme. Uh, right and uh, yeah it's, it's super fun uh, but there's some problems in here for instance um, if I um, put my cursor here right I put my cursor here and I try to press a backspace nothing really going on uh, and for instance if I just put the cursor in here start to press backspace it kind of like works up until it goes to the uh, beginning of the line and then nothing happens it doesn't really remove the lines in fact there is no way to remove the lines so it's kind of weird uh, and delete works the same way you can't do anything in here and also if I go to the right right so if I go to the right and start going further to the right it doesn't wrap around to the next line like it would in any text editor. It doesn't wrap around. And if I start going in an opposite direction, it doesn't go back, right? So it's sort of like, uh, actually, it feels like it continues to go further along the line, right? Uh, but you can't see it, right? So the visual representation of the cursor is sort of clamped to the end of the line. and But uh, like an actual representation is still further down there uh so and you have to actually press several times to to left to actually start moving moving in here so obviously this is because the text editor is unfinished and blah 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 and blah 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 but the reason why i left those features out is because of how i represent the text within the text editor in, in fact i represent the text in a very dumb way uh right because i just want you to implement something that works uh, and that's why those features that were missing in here were not um, immediately obvious, right? So let's take a look at the representation. So representation is basically, so this is the, the editor, uh, it's a dynamic array of lines, right? So you can see the pointer that points at the beginning of the lines. You have the amount of lines, the actually occupied amount of lines, and capacity, like actually allocated lines, a classical dynamic array, right? So in the classical dynamic array, you have uh, occupied space and also allocated space which is usually bigger than the occupied space so you don't have to reallocate very often right so this is what we have and uh what is the line right so line is a separate structure which is another dynamic array so we have a dynamic array of dynamics array dynamic arrays uh, of uh, separate characters right and essentially this kind of representation makes it kind of difficult to implement all of the separations right so we are inserting in the array of characters by literally doing mem move if i'm not mistaken so we can actually take a look line uh, insert text, yeah, insert text before. Uh, we provide some text to insert and uh, my neighbors are doing something weird. I really apologize for them. Uh, all right. So, and this is where, what we literally do. We just like take, um, um, essentially we need to insert something in, in between the text. We take one chunk, move it a little bit and then just insert thing there so this is how we work on the level of particular lines and if we want to insert a new line we have to do the same thing but on the ar dynamic array of lines right and this entire thing is extremely like finicky and difficult to work with and that's why some of the features like removing the lines and stuff like that are not particularly like immediately obvious so obviously like um I had an urge to postpone them, to put them on the back burner because they're not fun to implement and so on and so forth, which are usually indicators of the fact that you're probably using the wrong data structure. 
And I think I, I am using the wrong data structure here because recently I made a series of streams where I experimented with the idea of implementing a text editor completely from scratch using only libc, right? Using only libc and I discovered a better way of uh, storing the, the text in the text editor. I believe so, at, at least I like it better. So the idea is the following. Obviously, uh, the text, uh, if you um, observe how the text behaves in any text editor, like for example in Emacs, it actually behaves like a single continuous, continuous line of characters. Right. So it's a single continuous line of characters, right? So I can just move to the right, and as I move to the right, I also wrap around the lines and so on and so forth. Right. So the idea is, what if we really do store uh, the entire text in a single continuous line? Right, let's just store everything in a single continuous line. So, but then how do we operate on the level of lines, right? Because the text editor also has this ability to actually move one line down, right? Or several lines up and so on and so forth. It also has an ability to remove the entire line. Like how can we do that if we represent everything as a single continuous line without any breaks or stuff like that? For that, we build um, I don't know how to call that, but let's call it something like a map of lines. So let me actually pull out the my paint. So I'm going to demonstrate you what I what I mean in here. Um, all right. So we are going to have basically huge continuous data, right? So let's call it data. Uh, right, and it stores the entire text of the file. Right, so sometimes you have uh, new lines, right, some, some text, uh, more new lines, so Ctrl Z actually removed my dots in here, uh, and so on and so forth, right. So then you also have a separate array of lines, and that array of lines is actually an array of structures that contain two pointers. Or in our case, maybe it would be better to actually store them as indices, right? So it stores the uh, pointer to the beginning of line uh, or index, right? So this thing points at the beginning of that line. And the second thing points at the end of the line at new line, right? So the next line uh, in here is this. And this thing uh, should point at the beginning of the line in here. And this should point at the, uh, begin, uh, at the end of the line in here. And we continue until we actually indexed all of the lines. So in here is an interesting thing. Um, Every time we modify something within the data, we rebuild the entire array of lines. And this array of lines actually allows us to quickly navigate within the data, right? So first of all, we store the cursor of the text editor as an absolute value within the data, right? And if we want to move one uh, line down, we have to figure out where, what's the line it's located at, and then find the next line and quickly jump there, uh, right? So. And when we insert in new characters, we do the usual trick of actually mem moving the entire chunk of data to the right and just inserting things there. Uh, right, and which raises a very interesting question, which raises a very interesting question. Isn't all of this slow, right? Because what if the text is huge, right? Several megabytes, or like 50 megabytes or something like that. What if, what if the text is huge? So if you want to insert a single character, you have to like move like a lot of data in the memory by one character just to insert the thing and also you have to rebuild the entire uh lines array that that's insane right shouldn't you use something like a rope data structure rope data structure so maybe 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 we're gonna use that in the future right because it's an interesting topic i never implemented rope data structure in my life before so i might actually use this as an opportunity to, to implement one so why not Right, so essentially the thing about a uh, row data structure is that it acts like a string, but all of the operations that allow you to slice and do some other things instead of being linear are log n. I think, <laughs> I, ju I, ju I just realized that rope, string, oh, that's why they call it rope. Okay, okay, whatever. So yeah, <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna pull this, uh, pull this thing in the description if anyone is interested. Uh, rope uh, data structure. Right. So isn't that slow? Well, obviously it is slower if we implement, implemented something more sophisticated. But uh, again, as I already said, I did um, a simple project 
where I actually tested this entire idea. Right, so uh, it's called No ID. You, you can actually find it in the description as well. So let me actually quickly uh, give you, it's a text, it's actually terminal text editor, right? So it's it's not graphical one, it's a terminal one, but still. Uh, right, No ID text editor, right. So, and let's take a look. So let me rebuild the entire thing just in case. Uh, so I'm going to open uh, the source code of this text editor within the text editor. So there we go. Um, and what's cool is that all of the separations that I'm missing in dead, they here work just naturally. So it has modes, right? So it acts like Vim a little bit, but this is not Vim, trust me. Right, so I can uh, in like insert new lines, right? And then I can quite easily delete those lines and it just works naturally. And it does precisely what I explained it does. It literally just inserts one character into moving the entire uh, the entire file and the size of the file like the amount of lines we have in here is almost a thousand well I mean it's 758 but I mean we're very really close so and the size of the file is um, where is the where is the size of the file 23 uh, kilobytes which is not that much maybe it's fine so what if we generate like a bigger file let's actually generate something something bigger so uh, let me do something like the quick brown fox uh, jumps or the lazy dog right so it's going to generate uh, indefinitely this kind of line and let's actually do a head and uh, cut uh, 100,000 of those things right so and let's actually redirect them into the uh, into some file in here right so and if we take a look at this file uh, it's actually 4.2 megabytes right so it's a 4.2 uh, 4 megabytes if we try to open this file in here right it opens up immediately. So we loaded up four megabytes of data well, quite quickly, right, on a 10 years old laptop. And let's try to um, maybe insert a new line in here. So we have a string of four megabytes and we just inserted a single character into it uh, like that. Yeah, I mean, instantaneously, right? So. <laughs> Uh, and this is not using any fancy data structure, just like continuous array bytes. And it's already quick enough. In fact, for all means and purposes, to be fair, 4 megabytes is actually enough. My, I think my neighbors uh, do not agree with me on that. <laughs> so, uh, just a second, I, I'm just going to close the door real quick. Alright, so... Essentially, for all means and purposes, um, four megabytes of text is actually more than enough for us, right? Because uh, we're making a, a text editor for like code and stuff like that. And file with the four megabytes, uh, I mean, I can imagine a project with such a huge file, but it's still fast enough, right? It's still fast enough. And if at some point of development, it's going to become slow, then it's actually really easy to maybe switch uh, from string to rope or something like that, right? So it's actually easy to extend. Uh, so I think it makes sense to start with a very dumb solution and then just improve it along the way, right? But it, it's better to start with a dumb solution that actually enables you to do uh, like a lot of different interesting operations. So, and um, yeah, since... Um, I finally know a little bit better way of representing text within the text editor. I was thinking, why not just go ahead and try to port uh, that approach to that, right? So, and if I take a look at how it is implemented in no ED, right, it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, so we need to take a look at the editor. So yeah, as you can see, the editor actually works, right? So I inserted some garbage in here, uh, right? And it actually works. So if I take a look at the editor, so uh, here I have two uh, dynamic arrays. So in fact, I have two data structures, right? The first one is data. And if you take a look at the uh, data, data structure, data, data structure, it's a dynamic array, items count and capacity. And lines is also dynamic array, items count and capacity, but it's actually array of structure. Uh, of structures and the structure is basically a pair of numbers begin and end it's an index within the uh, data dynamic array right so it's index within within this thing um, right so that's basically what we have in here and uh, yeah so I was thinking that uh, let's just go ahead and port this approach to um, to dead so and it's gonna be very interesting because I haven't touched this code base for 
uh, I think for how long? Let me take a look at the dead. I haven't touched it for a year. Right, so, and I don't really remember too many things in there, but at the same time, the code base is actually not that big. So I didn't think uh, it's going to be too bad. Uh, we have some, ooh, that's, well, I mean, I, I doubt that it's seven, I, I doubt that it's 7,000. I think there is some sort of like third-party third dependencies, uh, like STB image, right? Yeah, of course, this is like a relatively big library. STB image as well, right? So if we exclude STB image and STB image, right, I'm pretty sure it's, gonna, it's not going to be that big. But then to be fair, I'm not sure how to do that. So I will need to explore the clock uh, flags and stuff like that. Um, right. So, uh, yeah, and as soon as we port this approach to here, we automatically go into have all of these like operations of like just deleting and wrapping around and stuff like that. And we don't have to worry about it too much. I think I think that's a cool idea. I think that's a cool idea for a Zosian session. All right. So uh, let me go and make a cup of tea and we're going to start coding. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and try to implement this entire stuff. Um, so um, I haven't worked with that code base for quite some time, so I don't really remember everything. So we may hit some roadblocks while doing all of that. Um, so one of the things I think I'm going to do, I'm going to just use my usual compiler assisted refactoring technique where I'm going to uh, basically make the change that I want to make, right, and just follow the compilation errors and collect some information of what needs to be done. Uh, right, so first of all, I would probably like to introduce like two separate, um, um, how to say that? Uh, two separate um, data structures, right? So the first data structure, this is not what I want. Uh, the first one is going to be the data data structure, right? Which is the, the whole data of the text file that we're editing. Uh, right, so the items is going to be characters and uh, then we're going to have uh, amount of occupied characters and amount of uh, allocated characters. So count and capacity. So, and the same thing is going to go for the lines, right? So the same goes for the lines. And the, the each individual element is a line, right? So this is the items and also size T count uh, and size T capacity, right? And here is an interesting thing. We kind of already have the data structure line, uh, which my which might interfere with the compiler assisted refactoring because semantically it's a completely different thing, uh, right? To what I want to introduce. What I want to introduce is a structure. Uh, right, is a structure with two numbers, begin and end, which represent the begin and the end index of the uh, of the specific line. Right, since it's a completely semantic different thing and may interfere with what we're trying to refactor, I think I need to just name it slightly differently. So I can name it like line underscore, uh, right, and in our case lines is actually a collection of line underscore, so it's a completely different line. This line is a more of a lightweight view within the data, and this line is a dynamic array of characters, which is precisely what we're trying to get rid of. Uh, right, so, and if we just change the structure of this thing, that doesn't mean that we want to get rid of this thing, that just means that we want to change its internal structure, right, which again goes against what we do, so it might actually create some problems. So what we are going to have in here, uh, in, uh, on the other hand, editor is something that we want to change internally, right? So, and because of that, uh, I can just like quite easily just create lines. So this is the lines and this is the data, right? So we have a uh, array that contains all the characters and the lines, which is the collection of view within the data uh, and cursor since, uh, as I already said, in the text editor, the cursor kind of operates on a continuous data. I think it should be one dimensional, right? Which may change in the future. I'm still not 100% confident whether the cursor has to be a one dimensional thing or two dimensional thing, right? Depends on what operations you do the most, the one that need an absolute value or the one that needs the relative two dimensional one. Uh, it's just like all depends. So I don't really know. Okay, so this is basically the structural change that I want to make. Uh, Right, and I'm gonna go ahead and try to compile this entire thing and see in what places it breaks. Uh, right, and it, play, it breaks in quite a few places. 
uh, not as many as I expected. So let's actually take a look at the, at the first one. So what's interesting about this kind of approach, since I don't remember the code base, so I will probably will have to back off in terms of refactoring, right? So maybe as I explore the compilation errors within the project, I will uh, I will realize that I can't really refactor it without refactoring, like without another refactoring. So I'll have to stash my changes, do the refactoring first and, and try to apply it again, uh, if that makes any sense. But yeah, anyway, so, okay, the first one is in the function render editor into FGB. And what is FGB is a free glyph buffer. So I suppose free glyph refers to the uh, free type uh, free type font, right? Because I remember this text editor supported two different kinds of uh, glyphs, right? Just like a monospace one and a free type uh, using the free type library. So this is sort of like the buffer into which we're doing all that. It's kind of interesting. So what is the uh, glyph buffer? Let's, let me take a look at it. Oh, it's a buffer. It's an OpenGL buffer, right? We're getting into OpenGL stuff. So, and uh, yeah, so essentially what we have in here is like how many glyphs we can put in there, uh, right? So the reason why we put the glyphs into this buffer is so then we can upload that buffer to the GPU and then render it, right? So that's basically, this is a buffer. Uh, this is an OpenGL buffer. Uh, okay, so... Uh, we are rendering the editor into this thing. So we also have a cursor renderer. Uh, and cursor renderer is the thing that renders that cursor, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so uh, it renders this uh, sort of thing. Yeah. It's a separate renderer for some reason. But anyway, so we uh, set the corresponding uniforms for the uh, for the shaders, right? So we set the camera position and stuff like that. So then we clean the free uh, glyph buffer. Let me take a look at the glyph buffer. So I probably have to go to the free glyph.c and we just set its count to zero, so that makes sense. So then we iterate through the editor size and if I remember correctly, this was basically iterating through the lines, right? So, which means that now what we want to do, we want to do lines.count, right? We're iterating through the lines, so th that's what we do in here. Then we take a specific line, right? Uh, and specific line is, again, a dynamic array. Okay. So, in here, we take the begin. Begin is like begin within the space, within the screen space, if I understand correctly. Uh, and what we do, we just render a line. Oh, okay, so that makes sense. So what we have to do in here, we have to take a pointer or to the beginning of the line and then how many uh, characters we want to put in there. Makes sense. So far, so good. And that is basically it, right? So uh, what we need is just like, um, you know, the pointer to the beginning of the line, right, in continuous memory, and then how many characters. So in that case, uh, what we have to do, we have to take the current line, so this line becomes invalid completely. Uh, right, so lines row, and this is the first line that we want to have. So this is the line. Uh, the beginning of that line is located within the editor data uh, items plus line begin. So this is where the line starts. And the amount of these things is in fact line and minus line begin. So the way we organize that is that end points at the new uh, at the new line. That means if we take this index and subtract it from the begin, we're gonna get exactly the amount of elements in there, which is uh, quite convenient. So that's the entire refactoring here, actually. So I think that's that's fine. Um, oh yeah, that's that's very interesting. So we also have cursor row and stuff like that. Okay, so what's going to be the next one? Uh, okay, oh yeah, so this is supposed to be items, of course. This is supposed to be items. So editor, invalid, initializer, what what do you mean? Uh, right. Has no member begin. Why is that an invalid initializer? I don't understand. We were referring to the editor uh, by pointer. So editor.h. So it contains the lines. Right, so this is the lines. Uh, oh, line underscore. That's precisely why, but not, not really why, but yeah, I forgot about that. I forgot that the line, uh, the, the different line is actually called differently. Okay, so there's also line length. 
Um, but the line length is geometrical length, not the amount of characters. All right, what's going to be the next thing? Uh, so, yeah, there is no errors in here anymore, which is nice, right? So now we have to take the cursor row, and this one is very interesting, right? So as I already said, the cursor is absolute in our case, but here we need to know the cursor row, right? Where it is located. And it should be relatively easy to figure out. Uh, so maybe, maybe what I'm going to do is create something like editor cursor row, right? And here I pass the editor, editor, there we go. Well, of course, it has to retain some like size T. Uh, but the idea here is that uh, having the cursor, right, the absolute value of the cursor, you can actually figure out quite easily uh, quite easily how many like on each line it is located by just iterating linearly through the lines uh, Right, let's actually go ahead and implement that. So that should be pretty straightforward So I'm, I'm gonna put it in here uh, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and just iterate through the rows or lines editor lines count uh, count like so plus 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 row of course plus plus row and uh, now, if we can do something like this, line underscore line, editor, uh, lines, items, row, right? Because this thing is so huge, right? It's a single expression, a very big expression. It's better to have like an alias for, for this thing, right? And so here we can do something like editor cursor. If the cursor is between the begin and end, uh, editor, yeah, Emacs is doing something weird. Uh -huh. And so I'm also including the the end of the line, which is the new line, because, uh, for example, even in here, you can have a new line. So yeah, basically this cursor is kind of outside of the of the line in here, right? So that's why it, it could be also equal. Um, so I just realized that I don't have anything behind my camera. Uh, right, so it's kind of important for me to have that in case like I know what you can or cannot see So I can adjust everything on the screen accordingly Right, okay, so when we found that we can just uh, instantly return role, right? So what's interesting is that um, If we didn't find anything that means the cursor is probably way outside of the um, of the um, of the lines right so that means the line should be the last line right so we have to return something like editor um, editor lines uh, count minus one which is a little bit dangerous which is a little bit dangerous if the count is equal to zero right so count is size t which means it's unsigned and subtracting one from unsigned integer actually underflows it uh, making it very huge right and this is the recipe for a buffer overflows and stuff like that so one of the things we can do right we can assert we can assert that we always have at least one line, right? So maybe this is going to be sort of like an invariant that all the functions that work with lines have, right? So this thing should have at least one line. And it's relatively easy to actually implement, right? In the in the NoID, the like experimental text editor, I actually implemented exactly that because it kind of makes like a lot of computations easier if you just assume that you always have at least one line. If the text if the text is empty, you always have one empty line, right? And it just like makes everything easier. I really like that. Okay. So this is a cursor row. Let's actually go ahead and recompile everything. Another thing that I like to do, the editor uh, is very like very frequently referred, um, very frequently referred name, right? And it acts like uh, like C++ this. If I was pro if I were programming in C++, I would actually implement this like so. I would have an editor as a class, and this would be sort of a, like a method. And in that case, editor would be this, and in fact, uh, it would implicitly import all of the fields in here, so I would never actually have to, uh, you know, refer to this thing at all, which would make everything easier to read. So in PRC, what I like to do for these kind of situations is to actually call um, an argument that acts like this with a single letter, right? 
uh, and then query replace like editor with E and it just like makes it a little bit easier to read, right? So in C++ again, it would be even better because I will be able to get rid of this thing entirely. Uh, by the way, Jai, um, the language that is developed by Jonathan Blow, goes even like one step further, right? It, it has like a using key, a keyword, uh, which when applied to the argument, automatically exports uh, all of the fields of that uh, of that structure into the current scope, right? So it's, it's basically like uh, the advantage of C++ methods without having methods. Right, so essentially we uh, we have the advantage of importing automatically the the met, uh, the members of the of the arguments, but we don't have to do the classes and methods stuff, right? So it's just a regular uh, regular function, which I really really like. But we are programming in C, so we have to kind of like do this stuff anyway. So let's try to recompile this one more time, and let's take a look at the next error. So here we have a cursor row, right? So and what I need to do: editor cursor row. And I just take this entire thing, and there we go. Mm -mm. So the next thing we also do in here, we also make sure that the cursor row is less than size. Mm -hmm. But what's, what we know, right, we already know that it's going to be always less than uh, the amount of less than my own lines, right? So we don't really have to worry about that. So this condition is kind of useless, right? This condition is not needed anymore. Okay. Mm, so next we take the lines, the line, and then we just use its characters to pass them into the cursor position. Okay. So what I'm thinking is that maybe it makes sense for me to actually save the row, right? Let's call it cursor row, All right? Cursor row, cursor row. I'm gonna put it in here. So here's the cursor row. Then cursor uh, row, and this is line underscore. And since it's a such a lightweight structure, I don't really need to store it by a pointer. It doesn't matter. So line, what we're interested in is line begin, right? So it's more of an editor lines items begin. Right, so this is the beginning of the of the line, and the size is line and minus line begin. There we go. Mm -hmm. What I'm thinking is that I think I did a fucky walk in here. Right, so if I have an empty line, uh, if I have an empty line. It's begin and end points at the same. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just had a little bit of a brain fart. Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is fine. So this is FGB. Uh -huh. So I just want to do a little bit of a, uh, you know, formatting and stuff. So editor cursor column. Okay, so cursor column is rather interesting. So cursor column is rather interesting because we can quite easily to compute that, right? So I think uh, size t cursor uh, cursor column, right? It's essentially you take line and and subtract the you take the editor cursor, you take the editor cursor, uh, and then you subtract the line begin. Right, because again, uh, so the the, um, the lines look like this, right? So this is the uh, one line, another line, uh, another line. So the line starts in here and you have a cursor somewhere in here, right? So this is the begin and this is your cursor. To know the column, you take the position, the absolute position of the cursor and subtract the beginning. So you know its position within the line. And this is basically the column, right? And because of that, uh, because of that, this is how we do that. Uh, right, we take the cursor, it's bigger or equal to the begin, we subtract the begin and we get the uh, the column in here, right, which is rather convenient. So, and uh, on top of that, we can quite easily use column. There we go. Is that it? I think that is basically it. Uh, this one has to be data, by the way. We're referring to, to the data. I hope I didn't make a mistake anywhere in here. So here we just do plus, yeah, instead of 
We could have done something like this as well. I don't know why I'm being a little bit inconsistent with this kind of thing. So maybe I should have, I should have been consistent. All right, it's just item data. And let's just put this thing in here. And is it consistent now? I think it is more or less consistent. All right. Okay, that's cool. Next error, please. Uh, next edit, uh, error. Editor. Okay, so I think... The reason why I can't use this function is because I didn't define it in a header. That's right. I have literally, like recently, I kind of stopped using headers altogether <laughs> at some point. Uh, right, so recently I started to just develop either everything in a single C file or in several C files that I just include into a single one at some point as a Unity build. And <laughs> I know that it's dumb from the point of view of people who are like daily doing professional C, C++ development. But what I found is this is just make, makes everything easier. <laughs> but maybe I'm not developing anything sophisticated these days and maybe that's, that's probably why I do that. Uh, but anyway, um, I just uh, kind of forget that you have to also, uh, also define this thing in the header. Uh, but yeah. And I also quite often started to use like... Um, Header only, uh, uh, yeah. Header only libraries, right? Uh, passing one argument of incompatible type. That's very interesting because this thing is already pointer, right? So it's not really incompatible type. Is the it's a wrong number of indirections, right? So okay, so lines. This has to be items. Sure, I do agree with that. Mm, okay, and uh, we kind of have. A problem in a completely different place. We are already in an entry point. This is actually kind of cool. So is that really it? Well, I mean, there is a lot of things in here, but yeah. Okay, so what do we have in here? When I do up, when I do cursor up, oh, okay, so this one is a little bit um, more complicated. So you know what? Uh, I think what we're going to do, we're going to replace all of these things with something like editor, uh, move line up right move line up and we just provide the editor uh, and we're gonna just implement them separately so the thing i have in my mind right of course i'm gonna just remove that uh, editor i'm gonna put this thing in here move one line uh, editor mm -hmm. e well it's definitely not constant because we're planning to modify this entire thing uh, editor C, and I'm gonna just do a certain here, saying that to do not implemented, right? So essentially, when the execution goes here, uh, it is going to complain loudly, and we're gonna just go there and we're gonna fix that, uh, right? So that's gonna be our approach because to move up, first thing I have to do, I have to find the line and then move one line up, and this is precisely why I said that I'm not sure uh, when it is. Uh, what is better, how it is better to store the cursor, whether it's like a one single absolute value or two two-dimensional ones, because it just depends on what kind of operations you do the most, right? So if you want to move up and down by one line, uh, it's better to have two-dimensional cursor, right? Uh, if you're editing, like if you're inserting just text and removing lines, it's actually better to have an absolute one and constantly recalculate the lines. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so that's besides the point. That's besides the point. And here we don't even limit this anything, right? So we're just allowed to go indefinitely, right? Uh, okay, editor, uh, move line down. Uh, this is going to be something like this. I'm sorry. I just like I have nothing to say right now. That's why I'm sort of like singing. Um, all right. So what else do we have in here? So left and right. Okay. So that's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, uh, we also last stroke. Why do we need that? What the hell is last stroke? Oh, I think I, I think I remember what is last stroke. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're passing to the shader 
the current, the time, the timestamp when the last stroke has been made. I didn't remember that. You, you know why we do that? It's because when you start typing, the cursor should not blink. So it's not blinking. It only starts to blink after you like stopped doing this kind of thing. So that's why we're passing this information there. <laughs> Which is rather funny. Right, and... And I'm not sure why I put it behind the condition in here. You know what I mean? Right, why is it behind the condition? What's so wrong with just doing it always? Right, so you're blocked but you stop blinking anyway. I, I, I didn't see anything wrong with that. So what's what's wrong with that? So at least here we don't do that. Um, so left and right. Yeah, it makes sense to me. It's just what's, what's wrong with that? Editor move uh, character left. So this is going to be the editor. Mm -hmm. And this is editor um, move character right. And we're also going to remove this entire thing. So let me go to here. Uh, move. Did it say character? Okay. So this is left. And move character right. And let's copy paste all of that. There we go. A boom, 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 boom. In my room. Okay. I couldn't quickly. Yeah. I keep losing my multiple cursors thingy. Uh -huh. So I'm going to do a little bit of Emacs magic. Boom, boom. Yeah, almost. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if I use some sort of AD that does for all of that for me automatically, I wouldn't have to show all my um, Emacs magic. So editor grow. Uh, so what this thing does, I suppose it grows the editor, right? So, oh, it actually grows the amount of lines we have in there. Uh, where do we use this entire thing? Right. So I feel like it's it's also static, so it's more of a, like internal thing. Uh, so let me let me see. So editor grow, we we use it inside of the editor when we insert a new line, uh, right? So we know for sure that it's only inside of the editor when we insert a new line, and we create the first new line, uh, which is rather <laughs> rather interesting. Okay, I think none of that is particularly interesting or important, so I might as well just go ahead and remove that, but. Before I go ahead and remove that, I think I need to implement uh, a generic operation of appending an element to dynamic array. So as you can see, um, we have two dynamic arrays, uh, data and lines, and they have um, similar structure, right? So they all have three fields, and all of the three fields they have the same name. Right. And uh, what's interesting is that the only difference we have is the difference between the type of items. Right. So they store different um, uh, different kinds of items. And this is done, done intentionally. This is done so I can uh, come up with a macro that can append elements to... I almost spilled my tea. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, this is done intentionally so I can come up with a macro that can append elements to any of those dynamic arrays, right? So uh, let me show you how I usually do that, right? So, so usually define something like DA, append. Uh, DA stands for uh, dynamic array, right? So here I accept dynamic array, which is um, a variable, which is the variable, which is a pointer to one of these structures. It could be pointed to, well, I'm sorry, not, not this one. Uh, maybe I should actually put it somewhere uh, somewhere here because I keep accidentally referring to it when in reality I want to refer to lines. Right, so it's a pointer to one of these uh, structures that have at least these three uh, fields, right? Uh, and then uh, we're going to accept item, which is uh, an item that you want to insert in one of those things. The item has to have the type as the type of items in here. All right. And let's go ahead and try to implement this entire thing. One, two, three, four. So uh, we're going to assume that initially these dynamic arrays are initialized, like zero initialized, like all of these three things are zero. All right. Uh, you can quite easily insert an element into a dynamic array. 
uh, right if you have enough capacity so if you have enough capacity you you can do one of these things where you just uh, do something like that so as you can see we have a post increment meaning that first thing that this expression returns it will return the previous value of the count and only then it is going to increment it right so uh, we're simultaneously getting the last element in the in the array and incrementing it so we can get the next element when we do di append again and this is how we insert that but that only works uh, if the um, count is less than uh, the capacity uh, less than the amount of elements we allocated so if the count is greater or equal if the count is greater or equal we might start to have problems uh, let me actually wrap this thing in do while so every time i use this do while trick people ask me what's up with all of that uh, i answer that question so many times it's insane uh, right so i wish c would just implement we just allow you to have multi-line macros so I never have to ask for this question ever again, because the reason why I do that is because C is not a good language, right? So that's literally the answer. C is not a good language. You can Google up the following thing, macro uh, C do while, right? So, and this is literally the, the first uh, result in Stack Overflow, or you can ask ChatGPT. So these days, instead of Stack Overflow, you're supposed to use ChatGPT, I suppose. Uh, right. Uh, well, we still have free access to that because who knows? Right. And this thing will show you like different examples in in which case it does make sense, like like this one and stuff like that. Uh, right. So um, might as well maybe you maybe put that in the description. Why not? Do uh, do while zero trick. So yeah, if we had a proper language and not C. We would have not have to do that so but since c is not a particularly good language it is what it is which raises the question why the fuck do i still program in c and this is because even though uh, other languages solve some of the problems of c some of them not all problems of c they by themselves introduce more problems than they actually solve so that's why I still use in C, even though it has its own problems that I absolutely despise. Other languages, first of all, fix some of them, not all of them, and introduce their own problems. And you end up with more amount of problems. So yeah, anyway, round is over, I'm sorry. Uh, so let's, uh, let's continue. So what I was doing, I forgot what I was doing. Oh yeah, I was implementing. <laughs> was implementing the di append right okay so if the count is greater than capacity what we have to do uh we have to increase the capacity so the best practice right uh is to multiply the capacity by two right and just basically allocate twice as much memory that you had before right so you would do something like a realloc you would take the previous uh pointer and uh you provide the new size you provide the new size in here uh, and you reassign this thing back. I don't remember, Realog, does it accept the previous size? I don't remember that specific implementation of Realog. Okay, so it, it accepts only the new size, which is nice. Right, so we may have a little bit of a problem here. Uh, as already mentioned, capacity can be initially zero. Right, it can be initially zero. So uh, because of that, if uh, DA capacity is equal to zero, uh, one of the things we want to do uh, is to assign, well, I mean, I want you to put parentheses in here, right, I want you to assign uh, capacity to something like DA init capacity, right, so let's call it something like this, and let's say that the initial capacity is going to be 256, I don't know, that's just something, it's just simply something, um, okay, oh, we can even squash this entire thing, I'm pretty sure. So we can say that uh, the capacity is equal to da init if it's equal to zero. Otherwise, it is equal to itself multiplied by two. All right. So that's what we can do. Equal to itself multiplied by two, and we can squash that to uh, just this. Uh, to just this. Hmm. 
Is that it? Is that it? Is that how I usually implement it? Because I remember that every time I re-implement this macro, I think I had more uh, more lines in here, so I'm not 100% sure. So let me take a look at NoID and see how we implemented this entire thing here. Append. Uh, I also, yeah, okay. That's why I thought that there was more things to do by more. <laughs> Yes, I, for I forgot that, of course, uh, a real lock may fail, right? And it may fail only when uh, you ran out of memory, essentially, right? So it probably makes sense to do something like uh, items uh, not equal to null, and let's also say by more. <laughs> Lol. Uh, okay, and, th and that's basically it. So, and this kind of allows you to append to these dynamic arrays uh, quite easily. So you can say, okay, so here's my lines, uh, right? And I can do a di append, uh, and I can just append uh, the, the new lines in here uh, quite easily. Right, so that's what I can do. Cool, uh, and let me maybe prepare all of that. Uh, since we can't have multi-line macros, every line of this macro has to be escaped. So we have to do query replace, and at the end of this line, we have to put space and backslash, like this. So yeah, uh, welcome to C, I suppose. We can also align something by regular expression, uh, like so, so it looks a little bit more readable, but it is what it is. Uh, again, if C was a good language, good modern language, we would have not have to do that. But C is not, so we have to suffer. It is what it is, and it isn't what it isn't. Cheers. Anyways, uh, let's try to recompile that one more time, so because I forgot where exactly we fail. Uh, right, so when we do grow, we just like increment this thing. Uh, I, I think grow is basically, it looks like I was kind of trying to implement that, but since it's an old, yeah, it's a code, it's my code. It's code of me one year ago. That's what, what I'm trying to say. And this this shit sucks. You know what they say? They say if you if you look at your old code and you cringe, that means you're improving. And this this shit is cringe, I'm not gonna lie. What the fuck was I thinking about? Like I mean why would I over why would I need a while? Oh I, I know why, because I don't know upfront how many things I want to put in there or something like that. But yeah, and this thing is not as generic as that macro, but it's basically more specific version of that macro. Anyway, it's cringe, so let's actually remove that. Which will um, create a situation, I suppose, where um, um, where we're going to have compilation errors, right? Because it's, it's used in some places. You know what? Uh, I think I'm not going to remove it, by the way. Uh, so I'm going to do if def remove, remove later. Maybe let's call it remove it. Uh, that's actually a cool idea. I just came up with that. <laughs> Essentially, uh, here's the thing. Remove it is not defined. So that means this entire thing is going to be effectively commented out. Right, but then it's super easy to actually grab by remove it and find all of the places right before the commit that I want you to remove. That's actually kind of cool. I, I, I just came up with that idea. <laughs> right right on the session uh okay that's pretty cool anyway so what do we have in here insert the new line and why would you want to insert the new line uh that's kind of that's kind of sus not gonna lie uh because yeah again since we always recompute the lines we kind of don't need to um have this kind of operations right so uh let me go ahead and just do something like uh, mm, if def remove it, all right, and we can just say, all right, remove it. So we don't need this kind of stuff. Uh, let me find where we are calling this thing. Where we are calling this thing, let me see. Uh, we're calling it in a couple of places. Okay, so it's called insert new line when we load the file. <laughs> that is cringe, uh, yeah. So using the wrong data structure kind of make it made it more difficult than it should have been. Yeah. So here is the thing. Uh, it should be basically insert character editor uh, new line. 
So inserting a new line should be as simple as inserting a new line. And the editor has to do everything, everything else, right? It has to recompute and stuff like that. Uh, right, so this thing is not particularly needed, right? It is not particularly needed. Mm -hmm. And loading a new thing is also not uh, a great way of doing that. So, but for that to work, uh, okay, let's actually go and continue uh, following the compilation errors. Okay, so there is no insert character, but I remember that I had insert character. I think uh, it's coming from the no ed. So you can you can insert an entire text. You can't insert a character. We can't insert the character, but we can insert an entire text, which is kind of weird. When do you insert entire text? Okay, so, oh yeah, I see what's going on. I see what's going on. So this is because we get a text event, a text input event. Uh, let me take a look. Um, I want to find the definition of event. Is it really like just like a, like a text? Um, and it could be like several things. But we can always just iterate that text and insert character by character who said we can't do that i mean we can do that but i'm pretty sure and also i remember that the text events are needed for um for unicode and stuff so let me actually see uh, can i insert unicode I, I can't anyway so uh right i just switched my uh, uh layout to to cyrillic and it doesn't insert anything anyway so um doing it like that is not particularly particularly beneficial uh, if I understand correctly, this thing just can group several characters together. I think that's what it's doing. Uh, but I, I want to confirm that. No, not really confirm that, but I just want to see its definition, right? So event, um, let me see where is the definition. So this is enumeration. Uh -huh. So SDL text editing event. Yet there is a text input. Uh -huh. Okay. So text input event text size. Okay, so it's a little bit, I think it's gonna be a little bit easier for me if I just like insert this thing one by one, right? So insert text by cursor and here we kind of assume, yeah, we assume that it's null terminated, right? We can assume that it's null terminated. So let's do something like text uh, length, right? So it's gonna be SR length of this entire thing. Uh, we can also do something like uh, text, so it's a little bit easier for us to work, just a tiny bit easier for... Uh, uh -huh. So this is a cursor renderer. Uh -huh. So we also... But the cursor renderer, how do we update that? So let me see. I suppose it refers to the cursor within the editor, but the question is uh, how... Ah, okay, okay. So it, we just use the program of the cursor renderer so we can pass the uh, last stroke to its shader. That's what we're doing here, okay. That was a little bit nice. like, what the fuck are we doing here? Okay, text length plus plus i, all right. Editor insert uh, character, all right, so it's gonna be editor. Uh, text i that's what we're going to be doing here and we don't need this kind of stuff insert character mm -hmm. before e after no it's before it's, it's fine okay uh, okay so let's go to the editor mm, insert uh, text none of that is needed like none of these things are needed um, character and the cursor. What, is, what the hell is that? Is it useful? It's not even used anywhere. So we have a lot of shit that is not even used. Uh, so we're shaving off some uh, some stuff, and we have. So we have what? Am I going crazy? I feel like I'm going crazy, right? So, but we have a little bit of a re repetition. Okay. Um, Okay, sure. Uh, I think I'm going crazy already, but anyway. Um, so, mm -mm. so 
So character left, character right, insert character. That's what I want to write. Editor, uh, insert uh, character, uh, editor E. There we go. Let's define it as well. Mm -hmm. So far, so good. Uh, editor insert character too many arguments uh, yes because we also have to accept the character that we're inserting in here uh -huh. editor character x there we go mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so okay create first line this shit is cringe shouldn't be a thing uh, insert text before shouldn't be a thing either uh, backspace line backspace uh the shed like all of that is kind of cringe right okay so i'm gonna follow the compilation errors and keep removing the things that are not needed anymore uh editor backspace so backspace is just like yeah okay so i'm going to remove that as well i'm going to say that this thing is not implemented not implemented and, there we go. and this thing is not used we already uh, confirmed that by the way saving the file saving the file becomes way way easier now right so since we were storing lines now we're storing like a continuous data so we don't have to iterate through the um through the rows or anything like that we can just like take the data and just save it there uh, right essentially we can do f right uh, and then editor lines uh, actually not lines but data items then um i don't remember let me let me see so it's gonna be main f right so the size of a single element the size of a single element is one it's bytes and the amount of them is editor data count uh right count and we save that in f uh right so we also put a new line in there for some reason i'm not sure if i care about it right now so there we go uh, so it also can fail, uh, right? So, but I think I'm gonna handle that a little bit later. So this entire thing kind of simplifies everything, and uh, loading file also becomes uh, rather simple, right? So essentially, what you need to do, you just need to pre-allocate. Um, you just need to know the size of the file, right? You figure out the size of the file. Uh, you pre-allocate enough data for the file and uh, you just load everything there and then recompute the lines array, right? So because of that, I think I'm going to simply, yeah, I think I'm going to simply just remove this entire thing and say this is not implemented, right? Uh, so assert, so because all of that requires re-implementation to do not implement it. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, saving is good enough as it is. Yeah, okay. What else do we have? All right, some stuff in here. Okay, so this is should be ignored. This should be ignored as well. Uh huh. Uh huh. We go in places. We go in places. Uh, cursor. Well, this shouldn't have a semicolon. I think we're reducing the amount of uh, the amount of things. Line grow. Uh -huh. So I think we will need to remove that as well. Okay, it compiles. So line grow. I'm pretty sure it's not uh, used anywhere. It's used in a single place. In insert text before. Yeah. So and insert text before is something that is used anywhere. It is used in line append text and is line append text is and it's not used anywhere. Uh, right, so what if I remove this thing? So let me actually go through this entire thing and see if I can remove things. Line grow is not needed anymore. Insert text before is not needed anymore. Line delete. Um, oh, this is related to the to these old lines that I don't need anymore. Okay, let's actually go ahead and remove this. Uh, I mean, not, not this one, but, but this one. Yeah, I think none of that is needed anymore. Yeah. Damn, I think it, it will simplify a lot of stuff, right? So this is not needed. Editor need capacity, none of that is needed. So we also have remove. 
So none of that is needed, none of that is needed. And I haven't touched this code base again for one year, and I'm just removing all of that. Uh, and none of that is needed, okay. Uh, okay. So surprisingly, a lot of stuff here is just like completely redundant. Um, okay. Looking good, and it's compiling. Of course, it's not going to work, right? So. Uh, my prediction is, is that it's going to crash on one of these asserts, which is good, which is precisely what I want. Uh, but if we manage to pull that off, that will be actually kind of cool, I think. Uh, all right, it is working. And of course, it failed with assertion. Uh, let's actually see where exactly it failed. It failed at editor 43. Uh, editor 43, um, cursor row. Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, this is because we, again, so there was assumption that we have at least one line and it is not satisfied, right? Uh, so it's something because of the initialization. So the editor has to be initialized properly. So where is the place where we call for this thing for the first time? So we call only call in a, in a, in a single place then this thing is called uh, in here, right? Okay, so it's called in an event loop. And the question is, where do we initialize the editor? Where do we initialize the editor? Uh, let me find editor. Okay, so it's, it's here, it's a global thing. Okay, makes sense. Uh, which means that uh, what we have to do, we have to recompute the lines. Mm -hmm. So let me quickly do the following thing. Editor uh, lines, right, so it's not a pointer. Di append, and what I'm going to append in here is a line underscore uh, where begin is at zero and end is at zero as well. Might as well, since all of that is zero, I can just do something like this, I'm pretty sure. And just say, okay, so this is zero. Uh, and also probably have to do something like this, just in case, I, I don't know. All uh, right, so, and I'm hoping this thing to fail in a different place. This is sus. Okay, so we modified it to the point that it can actually create a window and do something, but when I press anything, it fails at editor uh, 81, was it 81? Yeah, insert, it, it fails precisely where we expected it to fail, which is kind of cool, isn't it? <laughs> right, this is kind of cool. Okay, so if we want to insert a character, hmm, we'll have to insert it into the, before the cursor, right? But unfortunately, I ran out of tea, so I think I want to make a small break, make another cup of tea, and we're going to just go ahead and implement all of these to-dos, right, that needs to be implemented. And uh, once we do that, the uh, refactoring is going to be finished, so um, let's implement all of that stuff. So I need to rerun my compilation, just to see, I mean, compilation is not going to help me. <clears throat> because it's a runtime errors and stuff. So let's actually recompile and rerun uh, the text thingy. Uh, I'm going to start inserting things and we're failing in here and I can uh, instantly jump in here. Right, so what we're doing, we're inserting a character into the current cursor. <clears throat> right, so essentially we have some stuff, uh, some characters in the memory. Right, so here they are. And we have the... Um, the cursor, right? So here, obviously, we have 10 characters, right? n is equal to 10. Uh, the first thing we probably have to do in here is to append an extra character to the data, right? Uh, append data, I take a pointer to this thing, and for now, I'm gonna just append a zero character, so I just want to uh, like add additional thing in here, right? Some sort of like empty thing. So then I can just go ahead and uh, sort of like shift it around like so and then so I can insert a new character in here so that's at, at least the plan in here 
and um, since it's DA append, it's going to reallocate the memory if necessary, and so on and so forth, right? So it's going to do all of the necessary magic in here. So the next question is, uh, what we have to do? We have to move the memory. Uh, all right, so I need to do... Okay, so my, my function man uh, in Emacs broken, and now it says arc out of range something, something, something. I have to restart my Emacs. <laughs> And that's why I'm implementing my own text editor, precisely because of that, okay. Uh, so in my text editor, this shit is never going to happen. Trust me, uh, Kappa. Okay. So what I want you to do, I want you to take a look at the mem move uh, function. It's, it's just like mem copy, except the regions of memory that you're copying can overlap. Right, it's literally just moving, sliding the, uh, the memory. Uh, all right, so let's go to the editor, src editor.c, right, I'm going to put it in here. And the destination in our case is actually cursor plus one, right? So uh, let's take e data e cursor plus one. Uh, it has to be part of the items like so. So this is the destination. Um, so what's going to be the source? Uh, the source is actually the current thing, right? So that's the current thing. Um, uh -huh. So that's the source. Uh, so we're copying from here, right, from 4 to 5, right? We're moving this thing to the right by 1, like so. And how many things we need to copy? Okay, so here, obviously, we need to copy 6 of them, right? Uh, n minus cursor 10 minus 4 is going to be 6 precisely how many we want to copy so that means what i can do now i can just do e data mm -mm. Mm, account actually got incremented by this thing though right so that means here in fact we have this yeah so if i take the count count is actually plus one because again we appended something in there uh, so, and if we subtract the cursor, we actually have like plus one, so we have to do minus one. All right, that makes sense. So we can even take a look at the uh, the following situation. What if this thing was uh, one plus, right? So what if it was something like this? All right, in that case, uh, it's equal to 10, uh, right? It is equal to 10. Uh, and this is 11. 11 minus 10 1 minus 1 0 and this is precisely how many characters we want to copy in here we want to copy zero of them all right that makes uh, a lot of sense uh so the only problem may occur when the cursor is actually when the cursor is actually greater than uh the amount of characters we have in here it can be equal it can be equal, that's totally fine, that just means that we append uh, at the end of this entire thing. Uh, but if it's greater, uh, we're starting to have problems. And in that specific case, what do we want to do? I have a feeling that we can simply make it equal to the count, right? We sort of like snap the cursor to, to the end if it's too big. Uh, the cursor uh, may produce problem if it's less than zero, but it, ca it, it actually cannot be less than zero because it's unsigned. If it becomes negative, it's actually going to be a very huge number, which is going to be clamped by this condition anyway. All right, makes sense. So this entire process, this entire process uh, has freed a character for us. So let's imagine that the cursor is somewhere here and we freed a character. Okay, that's cool. So the next thing we can do, we can actually do e cursor equal to x. So, and uh, that means I, I'm trying to jump to to the place with dot four. Yeah, I'm trying to jump in here. Okay, it's gonna be uh, A. And the next thing we have to do, we have to increment the cursor by one. So uh, cursor plus one. And that should be the entire process of incrementing this entire thing, except we need to recompute the lines. Uh, recompute lines, like so. Because we might be inserting a new line, that means all of the lines in there are completely busted, so we have to recompute them. Uh, so, recompute. I, I didn't create that function yet, right? So, let's, let me actually quickly do that. Editor, recompute lines, editor, e, 
Mm -hmm. And what are we doing in here? For now, we're going to do nothing. Right. At least for now. But one of the things we'll have to do, we'll have to reset the lines. Uh, one of the cool things of these dynamic arrays is that uh, you can quickly clean them up without delegating any memory, right? So you just set their count to zero. And then when you push additional data into that reset array, it just reuses the memory that it already allocated. And if you ran out of that memory, it just allocates more. So um, it, it's very quickly, it's very quick to just like, you know, uh, reset it and start to recompute it again. Mm -hmm. So the next thing we need to do, we need to um, iterate through all of the characters, right? So we need to actually iterate through everything and um, just to recompute the, the lines, I suppose, right? So let me see how we can do that. I'm going to start iterating through literally everything. So maybe we need to keep track of the current line, right? So this is the current line. This is line underscore. And, excuse me, initially it's at the beginning, right? So it's at zero. And... Uh, we're iterating up until the end in here, right, up until the end. So if we encounter um, a new line, what we have to do? We have to set um, end to i, right, and then append uh, this line to the uh, to the lines um, to the lines of the editor. So we have to do da append uh, e lines. It's a pointer, and we just set the line in here, right? And the next line uh, line begin starts at the next value in here. Cursor plus one. Actually, in the cursor, not cursor plus one, but rather uh, i plus one. Something like this, right? Um, mm -mm. All right, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, and that's basically it. Uh, but we also may have a situation when we have only a single line, right? We have only a single line and a uh, new line was never encountered. In that case, um, right this line is sort of like never closed right it's kind of never closed uh and what i'm thinking is that we need to do line end equal to data count and again the cursor can be actually overflowing the buffer by one it just means that you're in appending at the end that's what it means uh right and then i just do the append and uh, that should be it. And this is very cool. You know why? Because if the editor is empty, right? If the editor is empty, uh, this condition, this loop is never going to happen. And you're going to append at least one line in there, right? You're going to append at least one line. So that kind of, that basically ensures that invariant that I was talking before, right? So the, the lines have always at least one uh, line. And this is the reason why in here we did this thing, right? We just appended one line to ensure that invariant, uh, which means that maybe we don't even have to do that. We can just call this function once on that editor and it sort of initializes that editor. We don't really need to know about that invariant. We just, okay, initialize it and we just recompute the lines as necessary, um, right? So also loading the file should also recompute the lines, uh, but we'll get to that. Lo loading of the lines is not implemented yet, but yeah. Okay. So we're kind of foreshadowing that. Uh, we'll have to do that at some point. Okay, count. Uh, m minus one, something, something. So the count is, I suppose, data count, right? Specifically talking about the data count. Okay, do we have anything else? All right, so we've got that. So we insert in the characters and then we're computing the lines. When we're computing the lines, we just go through all of these things. Everything's fine. Okay, uh, let me try to do that. Okay, that seems to be working. I, I try. I, I press backspace, and backspace doesn't work. But we can just insert things, 
which is kind of cool. And if I press enter, it goes to the next line. Okay, so that just works. <laughs> uh, all right, so and it works automatically, exactly what I said. Right, so we just implemented very, um, like we implemented more or less correct data structure or at least better data structure than we had before. Uh, right, and all of the necessary uh, things work automatically just because it's a better data structure. Uh, right, so that's pretty cool. I can't do backspace yet, but uh, yeah. So to do, uh, let's implement backspace. Uh, so the backspace is rather interesting. I think it makes sense to do if you have, if the cursor, uh, let's actually also rename it to E, uh, if the cursor is greater than zero, only then it makes sense to actually do this kind of stuff, right? Uh, because uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine. Right. If your cursor is at here, there is nothing to remove. Right. So you're supposed to uh, remove thing before that. So it only makes sense if it's somewhere here. Right. Um, so it's greater than zero only then. So we can do something like if it's equal to zero, it cannot be less than zero because it's unsigned. We can simply return. Right. So there is another interesting thing. Uh, you can do backspace if if you uh, overflowing by one right it just makes sense because you can simply do uh, this kind of thing right so that's totally fine but if you way off of there you have to probably snap it so if e cursor is greater it's, it's kind of similar to what we have in an insert yeah, yeah. it's kind of similar to that in, in fact like, i'm pretty sure i can copy paste this thing uh, let's just go ahead and copy paste it right so if the cursor for some reason just like way off let's just bring it to here let's just snap it there uh right that makes sense so, so that way we always ensure that everything's fine okay so what we need to do in here we need to uh basically take this entire uh chunk and move it here right so essentially what we're moving uh, mem mem move um i keep forgetting so destination is the first one so the destination in fact is data items uh cursor minus one and that's precisely why we check for this one right so uh because we're referring to to one uh before that uh -huh. so it's another two and uh we're moving from the current cursor right so this is the current cursor and how much we're moving okay let's actually find out so uh n is 10 and is 10 the cursor is five right we are moving uh five of them right so that means if i do n minus c 10 minus 5 it's exactly five so uh what i have to move is data count minus e cursor right minus e cursor so for instance if uh i'm a 10 right i'm a 10 and the count is also 10. so that means i have to move zero which is precisely what i want in this case okay that's perfect and uh, the next thing is just data count minus one so if data count is equal to zero what is going to happen uh right it is equal to zero so the cursor may be way off aha this one is interesting this one is actually kind of dangerous right imagine that the cursor e cursor uh, is equal to 10 but e data count is equal to zero all right so this condition is going to be fine then this condition kicks in and the cursor becomes zero and then we're starting to do minus one damn this is very very dangerous i never thought about this this way so that means you want to actually first check this just in case data count is zero damn th this could be a source of like vulnerabilities in some cases it's just like in yo interesting I'm glad that I'm not writing any, like, security-critical applications. <laughs> like, e even if I were doing that, I would probably use Rust uh, as much as I hate it, just for this kind of situation. I mean, this kind of situation could have been caught by any language that does boundary checks, right? So, 
necessarily doesn't necessarily have to be rust right at least this situation is easily caught by uh, just boundary checks or whatever even jai can do boundary checks can you imagine that so yeah choose for jai mm. all right so then we do minus one and after that we probably need to recompute the lines right so we'll do uh recompute lines uh that should be it i think um it's pretty cool so let's actually try to recompile this thing. What else do we have? Um, okay, so I don't really run it. I'm supposed to run, in my opinion. And now let's try to do backspace. Backspace just works and also automatically removes the lines. Right. That's very cool. It's pretty cool. So uh, the other thing that we probably need to implement, we need to implement delete, right? So if I, I can't even use delete because I, to use delete, I need to move to the left, but I can't move to the left because move uh, character left is not implemented, right? So uh, it only makes sense if the cursor is greater than zero. Then in that case, I just want to do cursor minus one. And as far as I know, this is it, right? So to move to the left, you just decrement it and that is it. Is Yeah, that should be it. Run. and I move to the left and look at that it automatically wraps around do you, do you remember the beginning of the session right it automatically wraps around without me doing anything right again if you pick the right data structure like the features that you didn't want to implement right away because you're too lazy they just you get them for free right so <laughs> I just go that for free. I don't have to think about that because it's just like, yeah, it decremented and everything else is just computed automatically. I can't move to the right because, again, I need to implement that. So we'll just go ahead and implement that. So it's just cursor plus one, but we have to do that if a cursor is... Actually, it's less than data count, all right? So which effectively will allow the cursor be equal to count, which is totally fine. That just means we append at the end of this thing. So that should be fine. Uh, let's give it a try. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. So I'll move to the right. And I was trying to move down and it crashed. Okay. So everything seems to be fine. Uh, let's actually implement the move down. Uh, move Moving up and down, again, it's a little bit tricky because we have to compute the current line. So editor uh, current current row so this is the row and we know for sure that the row is going to be within the allowed range the good range where we don't overflow anything because there is an invariant that there is always at least one row and if the cursor is way off it's going to be clamped anyway to that row so we don't have to worry about that all right so the row moved down so it has to be plus one so if row is less than lines uh count minus one this time because you cannot overflow it right so we can always stay on the on the last thing so row plus one um okay this one is a little bit tricky right so because what we have to do we have to take the next row right row plus one take its begin and set the cursor to that but that might be a bit tricky right because that does not preserve the column what we want to do in here we probably want to also can compute the column right we want to compute the column so to compute the column we have to do lines cursor row and then take the cursor and subtract it and we get the column uh, cursor row is less than this thing so that means we take cursor row plus one begin plus cursor column but this one is very interesting so the next line might be uh might be a bit uh smaller so yeah this is this is kind of dangerous because uh the current line might be like this and the next line might be like this and you staying at here and you're moving down and since the column was bigger you kind of overflow and you get to the next line somewhere here right so what we have to do essentially we have to remember the column 
and then get the size of the next column. So essentially, um, this one is a little bit complicated. So I need to have next line size, right? So this is the next line. We take end and we take and we subtract. I can't see that stuff neither can you. Uh, right, I mean, I could have just done it something like this. Right, so this is next line size. Right, so this is the next line size. And uh, if cursor column, for whatever reason, is greater than next line size, we have to make it equal to the next line size. Right, which will make this entire thing work, I believe. So yeah, again, when you're changing representation of the cursor, right? So now it's absolute. Some of the operations are easy, but some of them are difficult, like in this specific case, right? So moving to the next line is kind of, it's kind of difficult, but maybe, maybe we can cache cursor row somehow, right? Maybe it makes sense to cache it so we don't have to code uh, like every time, but it can be optimized later. It doesn't really matter as much. So here's the current row. Then we take the current column, Right, we, we check that we can we can even move down, uh, right? So we compute the uh, size of the next line. Might as well actually do something like next line equal to this thing. So this is the next line, and then I can do next line. Did it become shorter? I, I think it did become shorter. Right. So then we take a look. If the column is greater than the size, uh, right, we can equal to that. So it can we should allow to be equal right because that basically means you're at the end of the line right so yeah the end of the line should, should be fine okay that's fine mm, and then we set the cursor beginning of the next line by the way next line and then just cursor column which is clamped to the size of that specific line so that could be that could be fine i believe uh right so this is uh move down this is move down all right so I want to also simultaneously implement move up, right? Just to test things out. So it's going to start like similar, I believe, right? We compute row and column. Uh, maybe this thing should do that for you automatically. Maybe, I'm not sure. Uh, cursor row, it only makes sense if it's greater than zero, right? If it's greater than zero, because we're doing minus one, uh, right? So let's keep calling it next line. And that's pretty much the same thing. Like the only difference between them is that, like, w in which direction we're moving. So after, uh, the, apart from that, it's basically the same. Okay, so it doesn't compile. Of course, this is items. So let's go through all of the compilation errors. Uh, all right. So this is not C plus plus where we could have overloaded the square brackets operator. All right. So, uh, yeah, it's a begin. Yeah. Am I an idiot? I think I'm an idiot, yes. Yeah, I'm getting tired. <laughs> it has to be items and then begin. That's such a huge line. My god. Yeah. Uh, all right. Okay, cool. So that's what we have. Uh, moving up. Look at that. And that worked precisely as I expected it to work. Oh, yo, 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 I can't select shit, but I mean, okay, so delete, delete doesn't work, uh, right, so let's quickly implement that. So delete is almost like backspace, uh, but you're deleting the current thing. Um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, when we're deleting, right, we're just doing that. E. And the cursor stays the same. Uh, okay, uh, let me let me see. So I think it makes sense to delete anything, right? As long as your cursor, you can even delete uh, standing here, right? So the cursor can be equal to zero. So that's totally fine. The only moment you can't delete is when your cursor is equal to the count, right? If uh, e this has to be e cursor is greater or equal let's put it this way to the count then return right 
So apart from that, it's totally fine. So if you want to return, uh, if you want to delete, so n is equal to 10, cursor is equal to 5, you have to move this amount of things, right? So 10 minus 5 is equal to 5, but you need to move 4 of these, so that means you have to do minus 1, so th this is what you need. Uh, mem move. So what we're moving is uh, data items. We're moving from cursor plus 1. Right, we're moving a destination, so this is the destination, so that means we're moving into the cursor, but from cursor plus one, so we're moving to here, but from here, and this is probably why uh, we check for this entire thing, um, if this thing is greater than count, we're overflowing. Right. But what's interesting is that we're also overflowing when it's equal to that. Right. Because, okay, so we're referring to this memory and we're referring to the, to even to the, well, I mean, yeah, if we're referring to here, we are referring to the memory outside. But since uh, this, the amount of, of characters that we need to compute is zero, we're never really dereferencing any of these pointers. At least, like, I think, uh, I think in case of mem move, it is guaranteed that if the amount of stuff you're copying is zero, none of these things are going to be dereferenced. I think it is guaranteed, but I might be wrong. But usually it never created any problems for me. <laughs> so, famous last words. Uh, anyway, so here what we need to do. We need to do data count minus e count. Uh, somebody in the comments can probably correct me on that. Uh, right, so if this thing is equal uh, to, oh, it cannot be equal. If it's minus one, it's going to be effectively zero. Okay, so that's fine. So, and after that, we also need to do e, ca e data count uh, minus one. I don't remember, did they put minus one in the backspace as well? Backspace, e. But on top of that, I also have to recompute the lines. That's quite important. Did we implement all of them? I think we implemented basically all of them, uh, except loading and saving, that's for sure. Uh, that is for sure, for sure, for sure. E doesn't compile, what the fuck? Okay, so what, what's wrong with that? Because I have to take the pointers to those mother flippers. We need to take the pointers. Alrighty. What do we got? Mm -hmm. So I can put this stuff in here, and then I can go and I can start deleting shit, and it works. I can start backspacing shit, and it works as well, and it's even convenient to use, my god. In fact, I think it's even more convenient now. Uh, something, something's wrong. Something was wrong. Uh, but yeah, maybe I was typing too fast, but uh, I'll see. So apart from that, everything's kind of fine. Eh. Yeah, something is definitely uh, wrong, but <laughs> I was trying to, I, I kind of can't point out what exactly wrong in there, but maybe that's fine. All right, so let me also see some other things. It could be actually something with how we control things in the, in here, right? So here we just insert things, moving up and down. Uh, F2 save, backspace, we do backspace, delete, we do delete. Eh, it's kind of hard to tell, so maybe I actually put some sort of a bug in, the, uh, in there, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so I want to be able to load things, uh, right? So right now, if I try to load the source code of this entire thing, it is not going to work, it's going to crash, if I understand correctly. Right, there we go, it crashes and you cannot load things. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's go ahead and just load everything. So we already have an opened file, which is rather cool, not gonna lie. So the next thing, uh, let's actually mark it as E. So the first thing we need to do, we need to reset all of the buffers, right? So because we're gonna be reusing all of them, right? So we're resetting all of the buffers. Lines is not particularly needed to, to be reset because we're gonna be calling recompute lines and it's gonna do that for us. Uh, so we need to do this thing at least. So the next thing, we need to determine the size of the file, right? We need to determine the size of the file because well, this is how much we want to pre-allocate there. Uh, right, so let's introduce something like um, static size t file size. 
So we're going to accept file, right? And um, the, the way we determine the size of the file with the C API is the file has a cursor, right? So we set the cursor at the end of the file, we get the value of that cursor and the value of that cursor is the size of the file. So since the file may already have the cursor set somewhere, um, comp computing the size of the file may mess up that cursor for uh, the future calls, right? So the, the it's kind of, it will be kind of strange if you just try to load from the file and it messes up your cursor. Um, or, well, I mean, it's, it's going to mess up your cursor, but it, maybe you already offset that cursor to the place from which you want to make this function to read. And by resetting and messing around with the cursor, you're going to read the, the, the data that you're not supposed to read, so to speak. So it's better to save the uh, state of the cursor first, uh, put it to the, to the end, get the size and put it back, just in case. Right. So uh, let's take a look at the tell. Mm -hmm. So FTL basically tells you the position of that cursor, right? So it's called saved, and we put a file in there. So it may be negative, actually. Saved uh, less than zero. In that case, we want to throw some sort of an error, right? So we want to throw some sort of an error. And uh, I already know what we want to do in here, actually. What was the, what would be the best way to uh, report the error? So for now, you know, I don't really want to spend too much time. I'm going to say saved is uh, greater or equal than zero. Right? So then I'm going to go through this entire stuff and I'm going to just like properly, uh, properly handle all of these things. So the next thing I need to do, I need to do fseek, which sets this thing somewhere, right? So let's actually put it in here. Um, so file offset is zero and then uh, uh, seek and yeah, seek and uh, and we want to take this thing and if error, um, well, I mean, we have to do assert error has to be equal to zero, which means no error, right? But then we have a result, uh, result is going to be ftel yet again. Uh, interestingly, again, it can be actually long, right? assert result greater or equal than zero and uh, then we have to do fseek one more time to the saved uh, we have to set it to the saved and this thing has to be zero yet again so after that we can quite safely return the result and that should be the file size cool so uh, say so let's call it data size uh, data size um, so file size file cool so we got the, uh, the thing. So what we need to do, we need to make sure that data has enough capacity to actually hold this entire thing. So essentially, if data uh, capacity is less than data size, right? If it's less than that, we need to reallocate this entire thing, right? So we need to do realloc uh, data. Uh, first of all, we probably need to set the capacity to data size. So that's the new capacity. And then we are reallocating this entire thing. I just realized I might actually have uh, a bug in the DA append. Do I have a bug in the DA append? Yes, I do. Because I forgot to multiply this thing by the size of the item. That's right. <laughs> because, again, this is one of the greatest problem in uh, libc, is that some of the functions, they take bytes, some of them take items. And it's Hella confusing, uh, right? So let's actually do something like this. Uh, there we go. So, and maybe this is why I had those weird bugs with navigation because, yeah, it could be actually true. Yeah, with the lines and stuff because reallocation was not correct. Uh, that could be the case, but maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. So, and here I have to actually take the capacity since it's bytes. I don't have to worry about it too much, but I'm going to do that anyway. Uh, right, so we're going to take the size of the items like so okay so i'm going to reallocate this entire thing and i'm going to reassign it back and i also want to check i also want to double check that this thing is uh, not equal to no uh, otherwise buy more ram buy more ram low there we go so maybe it makes sense to extract this entire thing into a separate macro as well uh but i, I don't know i'm too lazy to do that right now Okay, so 
we pre-allocated enough data so what we can do now we can f uh, read the entire file into the memory right we can just f read it so e data items right so e data items uh, and uh, let me see so it's gonna be man f read uh, so the size size is a single element uh, maybe it makes sense to actually say, okay, we're going to read one element, which is the whole thing. Which is bold enough, I think. <laughs> right. Uh, so after that, we also may want to assert that there, there was no error while doing that. And then we're going to set the data count uh, to the file size. The data count to the file size. And that should be it, believe it or not. Right. So we just determine the size of the file. Um, pre-allocate enough data for this entire stuff um, and then we just read the whole thing into the into this stuff into the memory um, and of course we need to recompute lines editor recompute lines e there we go we have recomputed the lines we have updated them and that should be fine so let's actually try to do this kind of thing it does not compile wrong it does not compile let me see so E data items, it's items actually. What else do we have? Okay, some other stuff. Items as well. Uh, eh. Items. A read file size. Uh, file size invalid. Okay, passing argument to make integer from pointer without. Oh, it's a data size, excuse me. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, data size, of course, it's it's a function. File size is a function. <laughs> okay, what else do we have? Uh, all right, it still complains something within because this is items. Yeah, sure. Uh, are we ready? Are we ready? Yo. Okay, something is uh, backspace is really weird. Some something is wrong with backspace with backspace. I think I know what, what's wrong with backspace. Uh, so let me find. So one of the things we with backspace that we forgot is that we also need to decrement the cursor because when you do backspace, uh, the cursor goes down. So we also have to do something like uh, minus one. And that's precisely why we check for this condition here, for instance, otherwise we won't be able to do that. Uh, right, so it's funny how, yeah, okay. So that's that's totally fine. Um, so the camera is kind of weird in the sense that uh, it zooms out too much. I don't remember if there is any limitation for, for the camera to zoom out, but uh, anyway, let me let me see what we can do. Okay. So that's that's rather convenient. Okay. I wonder if I can now write a simple hello world using this text editor so let's actually do hello.c can it create new stuff i remember that f2 is that and i now want to do cut hello c and well i mean it's kind of weird but you can kind of see it doesn't create like a new line but it, it contains that i can open it with uh, like vim right yeah so it does exist okay so let's actually continue so this is going to be hello world uh, cdio.h okay and then here we're going to just do something like that return zero and then here we're also going to say print f hello world <laughs> uh, that's so cool <laughs> right uh, okay I didn't want to do that uh, and let's take a look at vim hello.c sounds good to me just to see oh hello hello dot c i'm gonna run that hello world so that's pretty cool um so essentially we can um stash and just look at how the editor worked before uh right so i'm going to compile the entire editor so without our changes so without our changes the editor was kind of meh right so uh again i could just press backspace and it wouldn't do anything because uh, the data structure is completely different and that feature is not implemented. Uh, right, I can do delete, but it also doesn't delete lines. Uh, so it's kind of like janky all over the place. If I go to the right, 
uh, right so it kind of has this virtual column so now if I go to the left it doesn't really go to the left until it reaches the virtual column that is equal to the cursor so it was kind of weird and all of that were shortcuts because the data structure was not particularly convenient uh, right so now uh, if I pop the stash and recompile this entire thing uh, now we have all of this regular text editor features for free because we just use a better data structure, right? So, as you can see, right, so now I can move to the left, right, move to the right, it wraps around, I can start backspacing, and I just backspacing everything perfectly, everything's fine. Uh, so, yeah, and all of the switches were super easy to implement just because we used a different data structure. So, uh, that's basically it. So, that's, that's what I wanted to, to show you today. Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, see you on the next one.